that the sun shines down its power to all the world and makes the wind blow strong as it will. I want to hope gentle rains can fall upon the land so lovely earth can stay lovely still. Wish Hello, I... ladies and gentlemen. This is Energy Week with George Harvey and Tom Fennell. Here's Tom Fennell. I'm George Harvey. And uh, every day I go to the internet and I look for news on climate change and, and energy and, and uh, whatever I can find. And I post it at my blog, which is called geoharvey.wordpress.com. That is G-E-O-H-A-R-V-E-Y.wordpress.com. You can go there when I, when I read these off and, and find the links to the articles that we talk about. So I guess we should just start. This, this first news item is from Thursday, January 14th, and it came from Capitol, New York. Governor Andrew Cuomo... Got a picture of it. Got a picture. Governor An Andrew Cuomo announced in his annual State of the State speech that New York will phase out its dirtiest power plants, adopting renewable power. He said clean energy is a business opportunity for the state as well as an important step to addressing uh, to address increasing climate challenges. And that, that's an interesting picture. That is the first wind turbine to be put up inside New York City. In New City. York City, yeah. And um, it's interesting. I for, think it's more symbolic than anything well, else. Well, it might be, but it's interesting for a couple of reasons that has to do, have to do with Vermont. Oh, yeah? One of which is it was installed by a Vermont installer. Okay. Who went to New York just to put this just thing in. Just to put in. it up. The other thing is, the turbine itself was manufactured in Barrie, Vermont. Oh, okay. This is a turbine that was done, made by Northern Power Systems. I think they're in Barrie, but they are certainly in, in Vermont. Yeah. And they have, they have really superior wind turbines. You know, when Hurricane Sandy hit, I think it was, my recollection is that there were 73 turbines that they had made that were hit by Sir, Sir Hurricane Sandy. And they all Sandy. survived. Every one of them detected the the high speed winds and furled Feathered itself. There. Yeah. And every one of them, when the winds died down, just went back to generating electricity. And my bet is that <laughs> most of them started generating electricity and said, "Wait a minute, this isn't going anywhere," and shut off again. <laughs> that could be. So. Well, Governor Cuomo had a lot to say about this, but I'll just say one one sentence that sums it all up. Let's become the international capital for clean and green energy products. How about that? Well, there's, make it a good start because it's going to be a big plant that's, that's happening as we speak in Buffalo. Yep. Yes. To make solar panels. To make solar panels, this. right. Yep. Now this, this picture is, is kind of neat. I looked up. This is from a part of Brooklyn called uh, Sunset Park. Yes. I grew up in New York, never heard of Sunset Park. <laughs> uh, it's one of those little gems that nobody talks about, but it's a very pretty neighborhood. Yeah. And Sunset Park itself, I was looking it up on a web. It's beautiful. There are a lot of beautiful neighborhoods in Brooklyn. I, I used to live in Brooklyn. When I, when I was going to school, I went to Pratt Institute, which is in Brooklyn. And uh, there, are, there are nice neighborhoods there. Okay, should we continue? Yeah, we might as well. I could get talking about the Sunset okay. Park, but I don't think I will. All right. Our next item comes from the BBC. Oil prices briefly have fallen below $30 a barrel. Well, actually, they've gone well below $30 a barrel now as we're Yeah, they've gone it's down, down under 27 or something. Yeah, they yeah. have. Um, Where will it go? I have no <laughs> idea. That was a big surprise to me. Um, big surprise to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, on the international markets, for the first time since April 2004, before recovering again, well, they didn't, they, now they've gone back to not recovering, Brent crude, used as an international benchmark, fell as low as 29.96, but bounced back to trade at $30.22. Oil prices have fallen by 70% in the last five months, and they have pr fallen 10% since this article appeared at the BBC. Well, why this is happening is the subject of a lot of conspiracy theories. Well, I'll bet. But but one of the things that is happening, whether it's a, theory, a, a conspiracy or not, it's hurting the fracking industry, it's hurting the oil sands industry, because they can't get it out of the ground yeah. cheap enough to sell it. Right. 
And it's hurting the Russians big time. Big time. It caused and the Iran's Russians, hitting the market right now. That's and, right. And uh, but uh, the Iranian oil is not going to be able to compete. It's not going to make them money at the prices that we got the, now. No, and that may be the conspiracy theory that's behind all it, of this. It's conceivable. <laughs> we don't know. You know, we've we've talked about this in the past, and the the thing that I find the most interesting was the guy who was. Uh, and a high-level employee of the uh, Saudi oil ministry who uh, was asked about low prices about six or eight months ago, and he said they are pumping oil uh, as fast as they can because they believe that in 10 to 15 years it will be unsaleable and they want to be able to make that, the money. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It does make a lot of sense. But I think they've got a tiger by the tail here because now the Iranians have, ha have uh, the ability to sell oil on the market. But they can't get it out of the ground cheap enough. Well, they will still compete. Yeah. In Saudi Arabia, you take a, a soda fountain straw, stuff it in the sand, <laughs> suck on it, you're going to get a mouthful of oil. It's, it's very <laughs> cheap to get Saudi yeah. oil out of the ground. Remind me never to try Don't that. Don't try that. <laughs> I haven't tried it either. But the point of it is Saudi oil is near the surface. It is. They can get it out very cheap. They can get it out very cheap. And... Um, you know, when I think about the fires in Kuwait that were lighted by Saddam Hussein and what would have happened if he had taken over Saudi Arabia, which I have no doubt he intended to do, we I would have had an I unbelievable it. mess on our hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Putting out oil fires. And, you know, that oil fire in Kuwait, um, I have a friend who went into that part of the world often and he said it claimed it changed the climate in 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 that area. They had a lot of rain because of those fires in the in the Gulf states. I can believe. Yeah. And I forget which organization it was blamed a storm that killed a quarter of a million people in Bangladesh. Not a storm, sorry. Um, it was a flood that killed a quarter of a million people in Bangladesh on those fires. They blamed on that. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's we, in the right part of the world. It could have happened. We've got to a point where we are affecting the weather big time, as we will talk about later on. Okay, that was, um, that's, that was, where was that from? That was from the BBC. Our C, next, News, C News Renewables. Our next one is from C News Renewables. No, that was, this one, well, maybe, maybe the next, no, the next one's from Clean Sail Technica. That one was from. Oh, the, I'm looking at the picture. Yeah, you're looking. Yeah, at the I'm looking picture. at the okay. picture. That came from the BBC. That was BBC. Yeah. Our next one is from C News Renewables, which doesn't have a picture. Global clean energy investment in 2015 rose to, rose to a record high, 329.3 billion dollars. Report from Bloomberg uh, New Energy Finance shows record investments, despite falling fo uh, fossil fuel commodity prices weakness in the European economy and the increasing capacity uh, per investment uh, uh, dollar of PVs. Now that last one, what it's saying is if you wanted a certain amount, you would have had to invest less. So mm -hmm. this, this uh, record investment is kind of a super record of the capacity that was installed. I think what you're trying to tell me is that they're spending less money and they're still getting more investment. That's right. Because they're getting more for their more bang for their buck. Well, they're they're not just getting more investment. They're they're getting more capacity. More capacity for invest the investment. Yeah, exactly. But the investment is the highest it's ever been. So they're we're installing huge amounts of renewable power, despite the it's fact it's a double whammy. It's a double whammy, despite the fact that oil is low. Yeah. Natural gas is low. Yeah. Coal is low. Well, Everything's low. You would think that all of that stuff would have an effect on renewable energy that would say, no, you and can't do that. And it's not having any effect at all. And it's, it's not having an effect. And as a matter of fact... The market is speaking. Today, yeah, today I read a, I read a thing that we won't, we'll talk about next week. But I, I read a report saying that um, the oil-producing countries are reducing their dependence on oil because the price of oil is low, <laughs> and they're doing this by buying renewable power. Interesting. Installing renewable Install power. We'll, we'll, we'll be seeing something about that in Abu Dhabi later yeah. on. Well, it's kind of an interesting this, this article. Is a, we're living in very strange times here. Okay, our next item comes from Clean Technica. 
The U.S. has seen coal production levels fall to their lowest levels since 1986, dropping 10 percent in 2015 alone. Production in the Appalachian Basin fell the most last year. Lower natural gas prices and lower international demand for American coal are said to be behind the declining coal production. Um, the part of the part of the problem that we've got here is uh, it's it's it, th there is a huge amount behind the declining production. It's not mm -hmm. just natural gas pr prices mm -hmm. or foreign demand. But I again saw an article saying that. Um, China is going to ban new coal burning power plants. I think we talk about that later on. Yeah, and they're going to they're going to stop coal imports. Yeah, we both both of them are I think are on the agenda. Well, you know that I, I keep telling people there is a Dow Jones Industrial Average. Everybody's heard of that, but the um, there's a Dow Jones Coal Index. Is there? And the Dow Jones Coal Index was at about 750 points in 2008 when it was at its high. Yesterday, it went below 12. From 2000 to from, 12? No, no, from 750. 700 to 12. It has gone through a, re a reduction of more than 98%. And, and one of the... Yeah, I better sell my coal stock. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> you know, I, I thought this was so funny because, you know, we're talking about a state treasurer in Vermont who says, I'm not interested in divesting coal because um, I want to protect the, the uh, interests yeah, of the Yeah, I, of I the heard that. Heat. And I'm sitting there thing, thinking, we should have divested coal stock years <laughs> ago. I mean, this stuff is junk. Yeah. It's like saying, I don't, want any, I, don't, I don't want to have any counterfeit cash in my bank account. I don't think she's being honest with us. I, I, think, I don't <laughs> think she, I think what she's doing is showing us that she doesn't understand what's happening. That's probably more and, accurate. Yeah. And There's a quick takeaway from this one. Oh, yeah? It says the majority of America's coal production is used for electricity generation, which is right. no surprise. Yep. However, with the declining gas prices and the increase in renewable energy generation capacity, the demand for coal-generated electricity is slipping. And that's what basically this article is all about. Yeah. And we'll be seeing that a little bit later on. We will. Okay, the we're up to... The times they are changing. They are, indeed, very fast. We are up to Friday, January 15th, and we got this from IT Business Net. Uh, this, this is a neat one. This is good. Cool? I like this one. Yeah, I, I just think this is a really cool picture. Sun Edison announced it has signed power purchase agreements with 25 California elementary, middle, and high schools. Sun Edison wants to install high-performance solar parking canopies on each of their campuses. The schools expect to save more than $30 million over the next 20 years. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is a solar-covered parking lot. That just makes so much sense. It, it certainly does. I mean, in California, you've got to protect your cars against the sun. Yep. Here you got to protect cars against the snow. I, you know, I, I, <laughs> yeah, right. I used to work in Plymouth, Massachusetts. And which the the place where I worked was right on the sea, uh -huh. and there you had to you had to protect your cars from falling clamshells. <laughs> <laughs> the seagulls, the f seagulls would pick up a clam, fly up in the sky, drop the thing on a hard surface like a parking lot, and then come down and eat the clam. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I, <laughs> I have funny shaped, weird, <laughs> irregular dent appear in my in my hood of my car and say, what in the world is that? But here, here is an answer to some of the problems that are arising on solar. I yeah, mean, like it, where do we put it? Where do we put it? And That's some right. places are saying, well, you don't want to put it on ag land because that, re that hurts our tax base. Yes. That depends on how they tax you. But yeah. yeah. Uh, and some people say, well, it's ugly. Well, What's beautiful about Honestly, parking lots? as a kid who has spent a lot of his childhood in the Midwest, yeah. I would just as soon look at a solar field that had many megawatts of panels in it as a cornfield. Well, I hear you. Cornfields <laughs> are <they're> ugly. ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry. But here we got, we got parking lots everywhere. Yeah. And this, this would protect cars from whatever. Yep. And would generate electricity. And in this particular case, they're generating half of what the schools are using total. Right. That ain't, that ain't bad. That's they don't bad. even own these things. Yes. They're owned by a third party. They're making a deal. Yeah, well. I mean, it's not costing them any money up front, and they're getting a payment. 
Yeah. I mean, it's a good deal. For, it's for it's the a win win situation. Yeah. It absolutely. really is. It's, it is. Okay, are we ready to proceed? Yeah, why not? Okay, our next one is from Clean Technica. U.S. utility scale solar PV costs plummeled, plummeled, <laughs> plummeted 17% in the third quarter of 2015. Declining PV costs are fueled by greater demand. The bigger the demand, the more the cost goes down. What kind of, you know, supply and demand thing is this? Economics, supply and demand. Absolutely. Demand goes up, the cost goes up? No. Here, demand goes up, the cost goes down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a backwards world. world. <laughs> According to uh, Energy Trend Report, U.S. utility scale solar costs fell in the third quarter of 2015 to $1.38 a watt compared to $1.66 12 months earlier. Further drops are expected. This is, Three the, years this ago, is the installation cost. Yeah, w this is the, the cost of everything to get it installed. Yeah, yeah. At $1.38 a watt, there's almost no reason why, you know, I mean... I have no reference for that. Well, th when we started this show, yeah. which was, what, uh, two, a little over two years ago, it was two and a half years yeah. ago, um, the, the co cost I had in my mind was $4 a watt. Wow. Now it wasn't four dollars; it was more like three eighty-five. But it's you know, close enough. It, it, the the costs have been going so down, we're down and going we're down. We're a going third down. of that now. Exactly, and solar power is so competitive in terms of in terms of installation costs that I honestly think that we're going to see. So you know, wind power has been the big driver of renewable power. And yeah. Yep, it's going to become solar. Although wind is, I don't think, going to go away. It's it ain't just, going to go away. No. Where where you got wind, it makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. So anyway, that is that. Now our next item, um, and this is, and that's that picture isn't for this one yet. So you're well. You let's want to take the picture <laughs> off. Take the picture away. Okay, folks, you can watch. Just be patient. You'll get that picture. We'll talk in a about that one. That's neat. That's interesting. It is. Wind power in Des Denmark meant. 42.1% of the national consumption in 2015. And that's for the whole year. That's for the whole year. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and would have been higher if it had not been for cable issues at the 400 megawatt Anholt and 209 megawatt Horns Rev 2 offshore, offshore wind farms. This represents an increase over 2014's 39.1% share and is a new record for the country. Now they've got those problems taken care of. We can almost expect that this is going to increase. I mean, that's, what, 609 megawatts of power that they didn't have, and they broke, broke the record anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, for, for the first time ever, Denmark went a whole day without using its large central power plants. <laughs> yeah. They were able to, to power the country by renewables. Yeah. And they're not the only, the only um, um, government in not the area all. to do that. Um, the, the German state of Mecklenburg for Pormann yeah. produces more power than it consumes. Yeah, we've talked about that. And they export it. Yeah, they export it. And they, they're still burning coal because they have coal plants and they still export the coal power. They've got power purchase agreements that require that. But they generate more power than they consume and they, are, they generate more renewable power than they consume. So now we're up to Saturday. January 16th, and we are at that place. Look at that place. picture. Let's look at that picture. Okay, this is What a from, neat boat. Yeah, isn't that neat? <laughs> this is, and the, one of the things that's interesting about that is a lot of those boats on those canals, people live in them. Well, that's what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, a piece published on the website this week, the Sol UK Solar Trade Association made it clear it believes that residential solar remains a good investment for householders despite the government's backsliding on their green policies. And in the wake of the recent modifications to the country's feed-in tariff, this is from Clean Technica. And so here we have, you know, there's, there's somebody who's got solar hot water and solar uh, uh, electricity, probably have a nice battery bank in there someplace. Well, they, pro they don't have to be hooked up to anything. No. They can take that boat. Anywhere. It's on a canal. Yeah. You know, it's probably got a motor, but we don't know that because that's a, that's a towpath, so it might 
Might yeah, that's true. I hadn't even thought about that. It's probably a bike something. path these days. It is, yeah. <laughs> but it, it was a towpath. You know? yeah. It's a canal. And there's a network of canals in, in Britain. You can go almost anywhere. <laughs> you yeah, can spend all, all summer long touring these canals and not see the same place twice. I think, yeah, I, I, I absolutely believe that. They do have a lot of canals. It's a fairly flat country compared to Vermont. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what canals we've got in Vermont, but you know you Ooh, can, we got Canal Street here. We have Canal Street in Brattleboro. That's there, right. There and was a canal. At there one time. was a canal, and it was used for um, powering a wind a wind uh, um, um, a hydro system at the in down where the Brattleboro Co-op is now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yep, and that's why that's called Canal Street. Doesn't make any sense at all unless you know that. I mean, it's it's up on a hillside. <laughs> okay, um, our next item. The the and this this will tell you how people are getting into trouble. The Venezuelan government announced a sixty day economic emergency to deal with a crisis brought on by the huge fall in oil prices in the last eighteen months which slashed revenues by 60%. The country has the world's biggest known oil reserves. I didn't know that. And um, oil exports account for as much as 95% of its revenue. More of that conspiracy theory going on. Oh, wow. Yeah. This and Maduro's in trouble. I mean, he just lost the control of the legislature. Yep. This is from the BBC. And... Um, you know, this is a. There, there are a lot of countries in the world that are in trouble, be and because of this, exactly. because of this, and Russia, of course, is is one of them. Absolutely, uh, one yeah. of them. So that's why I say, you know, it's one of the conspiracy theories. Is this stuff deliberate to do this? Well, there, are, there are people who are saying that the Saudis are doing this in order to, in order to get the Russians for, yeah. for taking, going and taking over the Ukraine. I mean, yeah. the, the Crimea. There are people who said but, exactly that. Yeah, they do. But there's lots of other reasons, too. The Saudis want to destroy the American fracking industry. Yeah, yep. The Saudis want to destroy the American shale oil industry. Yep. And in each case, I have to sit back and say, why would they do that? Is it really worth it to them to take the losses that they're taking to do that to Russia, to the U.S. fracking industry, or whatever you know, the, the conspiracy theory says? Because they are losing money like Mad. Does the word inscrutable mean anything yeah, to well, you? Yeah, <laughs> well, I read an article about people in Saudi Arabia, Arabia talking about what they call the economic bomb. Uh -huh. And they are, this is the, right now, the, the equivalent of a bubble. And they are expecting this bubble to pop, except it's not going to be a bubble. It's going to be a bomb, and it's going to blow everything up. Well, just within the last couple of weeks, the Saudi government has instituted taxes on the people. They never did that before. They had been subsidizing... Uh, fuel, and they raised the the price of oil by uh, gasoline by fifty percent. So you know it's the, it, it's still it, it's still cheap. It's still cheap. When I was I there, it was fifteen halalas a gallon, and that came out to about three cents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, it was fifteen halalas a, a liter. A liter. <laughs> okay, so so it comes out to about eleven cents per yeah. gallon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When I was in Austria, when I was 15 years old, you could get beer for about that three cents, about, and it was about, it was about two shillings a, a liter, so it was about seven cents a liter. <laughs> <laughs> I spent one day singing quite a lot. <laughs> okay, Ooh, so now we are, we, now we're, yeah, let's get out of that one quick. Okay, we are up to uh, an item also on, um, on Saturday from Inside Climate News. The Obama administration announced on Friday that it will suspend new coal leasing on federal lands and overhaul the program to better reflect economic costs. We've got this, a picture here coming up. We have one coming up, but it isn't this. I this, thought it was this one. No, I don't think so. The one that's coming up is this. You, yeah. What? Oh, it is. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was being stupid. <laughs> you know, I do that for a living. <laughs> they pay me a lot to do that. Okay, you want to put that up on the screen so people can see? Yeah, it? that would help. No, I'm yeah. being stupid. Yeah. Well, we, Tom and I are good at what we do. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, to better reflect environmental costs, this would be a turning point in climate policy. It is a concrete measure toward leaving fossil fuels in the ground as science demands. And if they're going to reflect the economic costs, that means they're probably going to have to charge a big multiple of what they had been charging for leasing. Well, according to this article, they've been getting this access to this coal on federal land dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Very, very, very And they've been and even so they've been going for loopholes that makes it get they make them allow them to get it cheaper. Yeah. So he stopped that. Yeah. He he hasn't done anything to the existing leases. They're gonna continue. Yeah. But no new leases will be signed. Yep. I don't, it really doesn't matter. Even without that, this is a takeaway. The coal companies have been going bankrupt even as they have been granted access to a virtually limited, re, limitless resource at almost negligible prices. Yeah. So the federal government, as a steward of the public patrimony, can no longer justify business as usual. Yes. So absolutely. we give them a, we give them a gift. They're still losing money. Yeah. Well. And Alpha Natural Resources, which is one of the biggest coal comp companies. What is it? Alpha Natural Alpha. Res okay. Resources. In 2008, it hit its, its stock price high um, of, of uh, 105, roughly. And if you had bought 1,000 shares, you know, if you had said, okay, I can, either, I can either get a down payment on an unbelievable house at, uh, at $105,000, yeah. or I can buy 1,000 a, a shares of Alpha Natural Resources. If you had chosen to buy the stock yesterday, yeah. the last time I looked at the stock price, you would have had a stock worth enough to buy really nice now lunch at McDonald's. Because <laughs> the price has gone to one cent. Wow! And so the, your hundred and five thousand dollars worth have been would have turned into ten dollars. Well, just this last week, Monday, I heard one of the major coal companies went bankrupt. That's correct. Was it this one? Uh, no, it wasn't Alpha Natural Resources. They went bankrupt in December. Okay. And you know the stuff that I'm seeing, I would guess that nobody is going to get anything out of that. I mean, they, 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 there's nothing left to get. There's nothing left, and the 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 um, creditors for these companies, if if they if they, honestly, I think there are going to be creditors who are saying, okay, we're just going to cut this off. We're not going to even try to get any value out of the land that they have or the assets they've got because if we get these assets, we're going to have to maintain them, and that's going to cost money. Yeah, and so the so cheapest thing to wants do, them. yeah. There, there was one. They, they tried to, uh, they tried to auction the assets of a coal company that went broke. This was in Australia. Not wasn't it? a single bid. No, this was in the United States. It's happening in Australia too, because it's we happening about in it. Australia. Yeah. It's happening all over the world, except in India, really, because the Indian government is still pushing coal companies and subsidizing them and so so, so forth. So you know things are changing. That was from Inside Climate News. Now we're up to Sunday, January seventeenth. Well, we got a picture here. We too. have a picture for you. There it is. By golly. In 2009, Navy Secretary Ray Mabus announced that the Navy and Marine Corps would get half their power from non fossil fuel sources by 2020, and that the Navy would deploy an entire carrier strike group with biofuels replacing fossil fuels by 2016. That now, picture there is that particular entire carrier strike group. I, I think it's it actually is. part of the group. No, that's pretty much all of it. Is it? Okay. Yeah, there, there might be a couple of uh, auxiliary vessels, okay. like fueling ships aren't yep. part of it, but that's the destroyers. And yep. Now the Great Green Fleet is ready to deploy. This is from the San, San Diego Union Tribune. And yeah, the, the aircraft carrier is nuclear powered. Yep. And it may be that some of the cruisers are nuclear powered. I don't know. I don't know how those there, destroyers are There are, are one or two. The destroyers are too small to be nukes. Yeah. They're diesel. <coughs> Although well, those, they're, yeah, they're diesel. Those yeah. destroyers are huge compared to the ones that, you know, like my father was a destroyer yeah, officer. I was on one. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're much bigger than These they used These things to are be. much bigger than they used to be. But they are, basically what happens is that I would think the destroyers, certainly, probably all of, all of the cruisers, I don't know what that ship is that's, that's um, 
next to N yeah that's a that uh, that's a cruiser that's a cruiser yeah. it almost looks like a passenger ship it but might, it might be a refueling ship well yeah anyway these smaller vessels and smaller means under you know the size of the aircraft carrier are probably all fueled by oil it would be and yep. the and the uh, aircraft carrier although it's got a nuclear generator is 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 flying planes that are fueled by aviation fuel that was fossil fuel and is, that has been replaced by renewable fuels. Well, the bottom line here is that the, the Navy is paying more for these renewables, but they're trying to, uh, what would you say, hedge uh, their bets. They're trying to be if they If they lose access to yeah. imported uh, <coughs> bio, or imported petrofuels, yeah. which could happen in the event of a, of a war, yeah. They're going to be able to rely on biofuels, right. even if they pay more. Right. At least they have fuel. And you know, that brings up a very scary kind of thought, which is you've got on one side of the Persian Gulf, you've got Iran, and on the other side of the Persian Gulf, you've got Saudi Arabia. And the two of them are both losing money because the Saudis, are they're actually making money uh, pumping oil at 20-some-odd at dollars a barrel. They're making money on the sale of the oil. But they've got a huge infrastructure of, you know, various things that they're providing to people, and they have to cut back on that. Or oh, yeah. you know, they they are losing money on their on their overall uh, uh, funding enormously. And how do you fix that? Well, if one of those countries goes to war with the other of those countries, the price of fuel is going to go up, won't it? Well, it would only take one ship sunk in the right place to close the Straits of Hormuz. In which case, none of their oil. None of the oil is <laughs> going to get out. And on the other side of Saudi Arabia is Yemen. Yes. And it's also got a strait that's within the... That's right. And that could be closed off as yes, well. Yes, that's right. And so that's with two well-placed bombs, the world would be cut off from the major sources of oil and... Yeah. The, the, the oil from the, the straits around Yemen, yeah. you can get to the rest of the world from, by going around Africa, but that's a lot of sailing. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what the Suez Canal is all about. This is right. the other end right. of the Suez Canal. Right, okay. Well, let's get away from that distressing <laughs> thought. And well, we're speculating, but, back to but, clean but, but everything is really uh, precarious. Well, yes, it is, and you know, I've, we've been saying. I am amazed at how how I had expected a year ago that the price of oil, sometime in 2015, would suddenly skyrocket, and I'm amazed that it hasn't. I, amazed, yeah. Well, I'm very surprised that it hasn't. But honestly, I, I think that's still a very real pro a possibility. And there's there's a lot of possibilities <clears throat> popping up. Right I would now. not buy an SUV. Sorry, wouldn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the price. By the of way, I've been looking at that. that 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 car you've been look, talking about the six thousand dollar car. Oh yeah, that looks that really looks sharp. What is that thing called? It's a. I forgot, but it's a three wheeler. It's basically a motorcycle with a cabin on it. That's right. Yeah. And eighty-six it's, miles to the gallon. Eighty-six <laughs> miles to the gallon. It costs six thousand dollars new. It's made in the United States. Yeah. And I think they may actually be delivering them now. I don't know. As of this week, I don't think so. Okay. But they're, they're getting ready. They're, yeah. they're taking orders, definitely. They've, they've had, I don't know how many orders. The last time I looked, it was over 30,000, and that was six months ago or so. So I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised if they had 50,000 orders now. I think there's a, there's a waiting line on those things. Well, for a, mu a, computer, a, computer, a commuter car, yeah. you couldn't beat something like that. Absolutely. One or two people. <laughs> Water 86 miles an hour, miles. easy to park. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure it's comfortable inside. You can, you can have two of them side by side in the space that it puts, you, you take a, <laughs> have a car. You know? Okay, Clean Technica. According to a report published by the International Renewable Energy Agency, renewable energy benefits, uh, measuring the uh, economics, that's the name of a report, increasing the global sh share of renewable energy to 36% by 2013 would increase global gross domestic product by up to 1.1%. This means about $1.3 trillion. 
Now, I'm going to. You got to go over that one again. Yeah, that's to hard over. to understand. It's hard I mean. to understand. I'm going to. I'm going <laughs> to leave all the stuff off about who it came from and the name of the of the organization. It says increasing the global share of renewable energy to 36 percent. So just over a third of our energy is coming by from renewables. If we do that by 2030, which is 15 years less than 15 years away, this would increase global gross domestic product by up to 1.1 percent. Doesn't which sound like much. Well, it means an increase of 1.3 trillion dollars. That sounds like much. <laughs> <laughs> you will get lots of lunches at McDonald's. I would think. 1.3 trillion dollars. So what the bottom line is, we are making progress. We can. We, we can make, we huge, can make progress. huge progress, but on top of that, we can not only make progress on climate change, on whatever, but we can make money doing it. That's what it's all about. That's what it's about. <laughs> okay, we are up to Monday, January 18th. Oil prices fell below $28 a barrel amid fears of the lifting of Western sanctions on Iran would increase the oversupply. Brent crude, used as the international benchmark, fell as low as $27.67 a barrel, the lowest since 2003. And by the way, as I'm reading this, it's gone below that. Gone below that, yep. Before recovering slightly to trade at 28.17, the price of U.S. crude fell to 28.86. It has since then gone below 27. This is from the BBC and it has shaken up the stock market. Yes, funny things are happening to the stock market. Funny things are happening, yeah. Um, let's continue. There's a quick takeaway yeah. here because the, we'll talk about Iran. Yeah. They're coming on the market now with oil. Right. So that's going to make this worse, make the situation. It's they're going to make the situation They're worse. capable of producing 500,000 barrels a day. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the, the wisdom is that it, they have to get like $45 a barrel or $50 a barrel to break even. To break that. even. But that doesn't mean... They might still sell it losing their, money. Well, also, cash is coming different in. wells are going to produce at different prices. Yeah, yeah. And so they could, they could take just their easy oil and sell yeah. that and, and make money. So this is a... This is a okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I think we're going to get back to this. Um, and we can comment on this in, in, a, in a few minutes. The North African um, country of Morocco has achieved a new low for wind energy costs, securing average bids of just below $30 per megawatt hour from its tender for, 108, uh, for 850 uh, megawatts um, of large-scale wind energy products, with the lowest being $25 per megawatt hour. Until recently, Morocco sourced all its energy needs from fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are losing a customer. This is from Renew, Renew Economy. And by the way, $30 per megawatt hour is the equivalent of three cents per kilowatt. Yeah. Hour. This is very cheap <laughs> electricity. Well, this was a very interesting article. We haven't heard much about Morocco. Huh? That's not it yet. The oh, picture? yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> we haven't heard much about Morocco, but yeah. it's on the northwest corner of Africa. Yes. It's facing west. Yes. And we're aimed right at it are the trade winds. Oh, wow. So, Make money on that one. <laughs> Not so only they that. have a constant source of good wind for generating wind, and they've been taking advantage of it. Nobody's even noticing it. And, but they've also been taking advantage of the fact that they've got a very dry climate and lots of sunshine, and they can get good Solar. Good solar and boot. Yeah. <laughs> They're in a perfect position to be making uh, uh, their own electricity. And, you know, the fossil fuel industry is, is, it has been making out on these poor people for years and years and years yeah, and years. Yeah, they have. Yeah. They've been, buy they've been buying fossil fuel and they didn't need to. That's right. <laughs> and you mentioned that three cents a kilowatt hour, which is dirt cheap. I mean, my God. Unbelievable. Dirt cheap. Unbelievable. There's a little quick takeaway here. Even if the coal were free... A coal-fired plant could not match these costs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that's true. I had, interesting. It's a it's interesting. A, it's a really interesting fact, you know. The the uh, but that's pretty easy to calculate. Okay, our next. The next one is very interesting too. Came from Clean Technica. In its first year of operation, the so-called Shams One plant in Abu Dhabi beat expectations by a wide margin, and its second year figures are even better. That's called shumps, and it means shumps. 
Sun. Okay. So that means I'm sun. glad yep. you told me. Yep. The concentrating solar plant is has a nameplate capacity of 100 megawatts. But That's a peak, lot, guys. Yeah, but in peak <laughs> summer do days in 2015, it was producing 125 megawatts. Go more figure. than it was designed to. More than it was designed to, yeah. And that, by the way, you can see how this works. There's a pipe, and the pipe carries something that gets very, very hot. that pipe is white hot. Yeah, it's a hot pipe. And the, the parabolic trough mirrors focus the sun on that pipe. And I believe they're pushing salt through those pipes. Liquid salt. Liquid salt, probably. And, yeah. yeah, hot enough to be a liquid. Certainly pipe. not water. Yeah, and we have another picture of this plant. Yeah, if we can, we can get it up here. There it is. Oh, there it is. And That's a panoramic picture of it. It gives you some idea how big that plant yeah. is. Yeah, it, it, this, this picture, on the left, you're looking at, at one end of a road, and on the right, you're looking at the other end of the road. The camera, in effect, they didn't actually do it this way, probably. They, the way they used to make can, panoramic pictures was they had a special camera that would turn as yeah, it was taking yeah, the picture. Yeah. And it would, it would, it would only take a very narrow part and add them all together and, and, the, and the film would be advanced yeah. through the thing yeah. as it was turning and they'd come <laughs> up with these panoramic pictures. This picture shows a 180 degree view and it basically says yeah if you're standing next to this plant it goes from horizon to horizon. Well you can't there's nothing in that picture to give you a perspective because there's no trucks no people no nothing right. like that. Yep. But we just looked at one of those troughs. Yep. And that trough is what, 20 feet wide or something? I don't like know. That. And we can see them in this picture, and they're tiny. They look kind of small, don't they? Put this in perspective. That's 100 megawatts. Yep. Now, the biggest plant, the biggest solar panel farm operating right now in Brattleboro is two and a half megawatts. Right. And they're talking about putting one up that's almost five megawatts. Right. Almost five. Right. And that's it going to be in the landfill, and that's a lot of land. Yes. So this whole plant is probably about as big as Brattleboro itself. Yeah, but if they didn't have that technology to install, I wonder how much the land under there would be worth. This desert wouldn't be worth much at all. <laughs> Dollar an acre. <laughs> no. now, well, unfortunately, we don't have a picture of it, but the, I found it very interesting. In order to clean these plants, and they have to clean them because there's a constant wind blowing. Yes. Which brings up the idea of wind turbines, but that's for the future. Yeah. yeah. But it puts it blows sand on these things. So yeah. they have to clean them once they a week. You have to get the sand off. And they got a marvelous machine that costs a half a million dollars each. Yeah, that goes up there at night and cleans these. It's got about six or seven wheels. That, yeah. And it's an amazing just, machine. Just think about cleaning off those troughs. You don't want to damage anything. You've got to have something special to be able to do this. This is not a joke. This is and the, well, this, this, the <laughs> how much do the trucks cost? Half a million half dollars a, million a piece. Each. Yeah. Okay. And they got five of them. And they've got five of them. Yeah. Well, that's more than I've. Got. So they're working every night. They they <laughs> clean every panel once a week. How about that? And they do it at night, of course. Yeah. Which is a good Can't way to do things. Make, that's called making hay while the sun don't shine. That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our next item comes from CNews Renewables. Germany connected a record 2,282.4 megawatts of offshore wind capacity to the grid in 2015. Yeah, we got a picture of this too, don't we? Do we? I don't think so. These are this, adwoods. This is the picture. This is the picture. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Okay, we're, we're just learning about pictures, <laughs> folks. Um, it just... This is 2,282.4 megawatts were installed in 2015. In that's 2000, in all of Germany. That's in offshore, German yeah. offshore. 492, or less than, about, about we'll say a little over Why 20%. Why don't we say 500? <laughs> yeah, 500. They installed 2,300 in 2015. 500 were installed in 2014, 700 are scheduled for 2016. At the end of 2014, 1,345 megawatts of fully installed in German waters, uh, turbines in German waters, were waiting for grid connections due to delays. They can't get enough cable fast enough. They, that's the issue. Yeah. It's the cables and the, and the, uh, uh, the, um, 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 
I'm thinking of the word. Substations. Substations, yeah. Substations are probably there already. Oh, yeah. I think they're running into a backlog on cables. This came from CNews Renewables. Our next item is from Bloomberg. China's gross domestic product grew by 6.9%. Oh, those poor people. If that <laughs> happened to us, we'd be jumping for joy. In 2015, from a year earlier, the least growth since 1990. Just think about that. According to government 7% figures, is the least growth. That's the least wow. growth. Power consumption rose f a half a percent, slowing from uh, slowing from 3.8% the previous year. So the power consumption fell from 3.8% growth to half a percent. Is it falling because their economy is slowing, or is Actually, it falling because they're more efficient? Well, it says coal imports fell 30% last year, and approval of new mines may be suspended. Um, th and the country is going to close more than a thousand mines in 2016. Yeah, and and you know this is they're changing things. And as a matter of fact, an item came up in the news today saying, well, it didn't actually rise 0.5 percent; it fell two percent. So this is the power consumption. No, it was yeah, it was power consumption. So we'll see more about that. Uh, that was from Bloomberg. Okay, we're up to Wednesday. Bloomberg does a good job. They're yeah, right they on do. top of this, this stuff. Is, yeah. Uh, Wednesday, January 20th. Carbon capture and sequestration is expensive because each step, the capture, distribution, and sequestration, is expensive. According to an organization which promotes carbon capture and, and sequestration, it will, uh, it will cost $120 to $140 per ton of carbon dioxide. This means... 16.8 cents per kilowatt hour to 19.6 cents per kilowatt hour would be the increase in the cost of the electricity. And yeah, and this, was, this was a very interesting article. It's also a very long article yeah. and very detailed article. Yeah, very I spent detailed. a lot of time reading it. but Fascinating article. The bottom line, I, I've been thinking, you know, the answer to this, well, what, let's start taking the carbon dioxide back out of the air and... It's easy to do. You just plant lots and lots of trees. Well, that's that's the best way to do it. Yeah. But they're talking about it doing it industrially, and I was well, I've been thinking this would be a good idea. Yeah. This article basically says that's so damned expensive. It isn't even it's crazy. It isn't and, even a possibility. And of course, the question is how are you? A question is how are you going to sequester the carbon? Because what they're proposing is pumping it into mines. Pumping uh, it under the ground putting and it hoping it stays there. Big bags at the <laughs> bottom of the ocean and stuff like that. Yeah, putting it Storing away. it, moving it, yeah. all of these things are very, very, very expensive. costly and they're not going to work. Yeah, now, one thing that we could talk about here for a second, what is a ton of carbon dioxide? And a ton of carbon dioxide is the amount of carbon dioxide that you get, this is roughly speaking, by... Um, by burning a hundred, a hundred, a little less than a hundred gallons of gasoline. Okay. So if you have, I a, know it's, it's much more than the weight of the fuel. Oh yeah, much but much. There's more. a reason for that. Maybe we could mention that to people. The reason why it's more than the weight of the fuel is because it, just take methane as an example, and methane is a, is the simplest of the alkanes, which includes gasoline. Methane is CH four. Yeah. One carbon. Four hydrogens. Okay, the carbon has an atomic weight of about 12. The hydrogens ha have an atomic weight of one. One. So the molecular weight of CH4, methane, is 16. Yeah. All right. In order to burn that, you need two oxygens to attach to the carbon. The carbon. And you need an oxygen for each of, 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 the, of the, for one oxygen for two hydrogen atoms and you're going to get, you've got four so you need two oxygens for those so so you've got now four oxygens four oxygens which have and an atomic weight of 16 each is, okay so they're more than the carbon they're more than the carbon they and weigh so, a, their molecular weight is the same as the methane yeah so one molecule of methane takes four atoms of oxygen and those four ad atoms each individually weigh as much as the methane. So we're talking four times as much weight. We're being in CO2 in in, in, in CO2. oxygen used. The, yeah, the, the, total, the CO2 the, the is going to be total, five times as much weight. Yeah, but the but the horrible thing about this is that that's just the methane that you got, 
and burning that methane. It says nothing about methane leaks. It says nothing. No, no about not, not even touching transportation. That. It says nothing about drilling. It, and and we're well aware of oil. what's going on in California right, right now. Right, shale oil. It if you're going to burn an oil, a, a gallon of shale oil. If you're going to burn a gallon of gasoline that came from shale oil, yeah, you're going to you're going to be what you are accounting for is about three and a half gallons of oil, because it took two and a half cost gallons to get of oil to, shale. to produce. It's we're, this is a crazy. So it's a no win situation. No, it's no win. There is such a thing as a win win. Yeah, and this there's is. <laughs> yeah, there's such a thing as a win win lose. Yeah, and the win win lose is if I'm the oil company and you're the other oil company and we have lots and lots of oil and the consumer gets it. I win, you win, the consumer, consumer loses. loses. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the America way. <laughs> <laughs> what can we say? Oh, my gosh. Okay. So Here what, we it's, go. what it's saying is we're going to have to look at a different way of sequestering carbon than putting it in the ground. Actually, the best way is probably not to take it out of the ground to begin with. I think that's how they close <laughs> this article. I think that's exactly what they said. Yeah, and the fact of the matter is we don't need the stuff. We do not need fossil fuels. The only thing we that we go. need fossil fuels this, for this, is, this, is this, to this. keep our economy going while we're switching to renewables. This is a takeaway. Fossil fuels are nature's form of carbon sequestration. And nature took millions of years of free and slow processes to do this. Yes. It is not a rational choice for humanity to dig up the sequestered carbon, yeah. recapture it, yeah. and resequester it at great expense when there are alternatives. Absolutely. Leaving the carbon that geologic, geological processes sequestered where it is, is the rational choice. Yes. And, you know, we can talk at long length about why it's much easier not to use, why it's cheaper not to use oil, coal, and so forth. Well, we've, we've never thought about this stuff. It's always not, been there, yeah. you know, but now we're starting to look at it and say, hey, wait a second, guys. I got news for you. Yeah. The first tidal power plant, Yeah. the earliest that I have come across, yeah. where do you suppose it was built? Ancient Egypt? Ancient Ireland. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on the west coast of Ireland. Where? I don't, don't know, know, but it was about, yeah. it was about, it was over a thousand years ago. Okay. I'll be joined. I have to look that one up. Yeah. Bloomberg says China's emissions of carbon dioxide produced as a result of using coal for electricity generation probably fell 2% in 2015. That's the 2% I was referring to earlier. As a push by the world's most populous nation to tackle climate change resulted in less of the fuel being burned. Carbon emissions were reduced by 144.9 million metric tons. China is doing something about it. I they, mean, they got a big problem, but at least they're starting to do something about yes, it. Yes, indeed. Yep. And I'm going to go to the next one. Um, Green Mountain Power announced today oh, yes. the end of Year-end operational results for Kingdom Community Wind in Lowell. <clears throat> this is Lowell, Vermont. In 2015, the 21 turbine project generated enough electricity to power 26,700 homes for a year. That is an increase of 7% over the previous year, or enough uh, energy to power an additional 1,800 homes. This is from Vermont Biz. Well, there's a sub-theme here which... Uh is interesting. Yeah. The five Northeast Kingdom towns, okay, and that's Eden, Albany, Crestbury, Westfield, and Iris Westfield and Irisburg. Yeah. Are getting kickbacks from Green Mountain Power. Yeah. Just because they're nearby. Yeah. This isn't even in their town. Yeah. They're getting forty grand a year. Yeah. From Green Mountain Power. Well, if you think, if which you, is called the Good Neighbor Fund. Yeah. And if you want to find some, find out something interesting, call um, Searsburg and find out what they're getting and what they're doing with it. Do you know? Well, I called them up, and I don't remember exactly, but they have a, they have a, because this is in their community. It's in, they're getting the tax benefits. They're getting tax benefits from it, but they're also getting other benefits. And in this case, and Lowell's getting the tax yeah, benefits. They are, at Searsburg, putting money away for whatever infrastructure they need to build at some time in the future, like a new, or, or buy possibly, you know, a new fire truck or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they're also reducing, reduce their their taxes by a substantial amount. I would imagine there's not a lot of people live in Sears. About 90. 
<laughs> so, yeah. so the benefit to each each person is, is significant. That is correct. It's a big benefit. Yeah, payments are made annually can be used to lower property taxes or support local local initiatives, as designated by the town, yep. such as like buying a fire truck or. Yep. Now, what was it that we had promised everybody we were going to go back and talk about? Do you remember? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> <laughs> We were talking about the price of electricity, of electricity, and the and the uh, um, the price of oil. And do you remember uh, what day? I think that might have been Monday, um, January eighteenth. The oil prices fell to below twenty eight dollars a barrel. And well, the, we did talk about and the, that. And the question is, what are we going to, you know, wh wh what is going on here? And one of the things that 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 I've been seeing is. The big oil producing countries like Russia, they're all of a sudden getting really interested in renewable power because they can't afford to burn the oil that they would otherwise it, sell. Yeah. And so, and, and, and you know, it's, um, they, they, they're losing a lot of money because they're selling this, this, um, they're selling this oil at, at, a cost that's below the cost to produce it. And two-thirds or half, somewhere between half and two-thirds of their income, Russia's income, from foreign trade comes from the sale of fossil fuels. Two-thirds of it. Two-thirds okay. of it, I think. A third from oil and the rest from... Well, I know they sell a lot of fossil fuels. They sell a lot of fossil fuels. And they are absolutely in deep, deep trouble because they haven't, they haven't got a handle on this. And it's... It, it, what's going to happen when, you know, the Straits of Hormuz get plugged by a sunken ship? And that could even happen by accident, although if it did, we'd have conspiracy theories saying... <laughs> <laughs> the CIA did it. Yeah, one of the nice Putin things... Putin did it. No, one, that's right. <laughs> this Putin and the CIA were working together. This, you know, the, I came across something, which it was an article a couple of years ago, and it was very instructive to me. And it said something about fossil fuels being uh, kind of assailed by, by renewable power. And, um, the, and the article said two kinds of organizations are, are severely hit by this. It's a big problem. One of them is the American and Australian fossil fuel companies. Okay. And of course they named, I think, probably Chevron, uh, uh, ExxonMobil, Coke Industries was named. BP. BP, BP yeah. And the other one was um, Russia. So I sat there and I thought, what, a ha what, do, what do Coke Industries in Russia have in common? Oh, their daddy. <laughs> their daddy set up the Russian yeah, and you oil know refining what? business. Look at how... And he also did it for the Nazis. Yeah, look at how... <laughs> The, how the, the um, Heritage Foundation and the various organizations that are supported by Koch Industries and the Koch brothers are organized and compare that. You know, you're, we're talking about the, the State Policy Network and the American Legislative Exchange Council and yeah. they're very proud of the fact that they've got multiple organizations in almost every state in the United States and there's one organization for law and there's one organization for, for um, uh, propaganda, and they've got another, <laughs> another organization that's, you know, orchestrating things. And you compare that with the, with the committees and the party cells that they had in the Soviet Union in the, in the 1920s. It's organized the same way, it's, isn't it? It sounds like it's very similar. Yeah. And then, then, you know, I've said this on this show before. You've got this thing. I finally figured out what to call it. In the Soviet Union, you had... You had socialism of a type that was not really socialism, it is really an oligarchy, a tiny oligarchy, which controls the government mm -hmm. and tells everybody, this is for you, you mm -hmm. own everything, <laughs> but the government can, owns the means of production. And they're just telling the people that they own the me means of production, but the people have got no control over the it The people at all. owned everything, but a small number of people controlled everything that people owned. That's right. We have <laughs> hit the end of our hour. We're actually past the end of our yeah, hour. Yeah, we so did. we're going to have to we, say goodbye we, to everybody. Bye. I See think you next we can time. say goodbye. I want to hope gentle rains can fall upon the land so lovely earth can
can stay lovely still.